We all know how much criticism Gotham Knights got after its release, right? So I bought the deluxe edition of Gotham Knights from Steam at a 75% discounted price. Now, after playing Gotham Knights and exploring various things for more than 20 hours, I will tell you about both the good stuff and the bad stuff that I found in the game. And I will also tell you that when you should play the game and when not. And ultimately we will see at which price point it is worth buying the game. So let's go! First of all, we can switch between Nightwing, Batgirl, Robin, and Red Hood anytime before starting a new mission. You have to visit Belfry, the secret new headquarters, to switch between any character, do your training stuff, and explore several other things there. All the four playable characters have different kinds of skills and traversal abilities, which feels unique and different from one another. You will experience that you're playing with a different superhero when you switch between them. Now here are some main issues. First, each character's movement feels very odd. If you try to move either forward or backward, then the character or the protagonist first starts walking for 1 to 3 seconds, and then he or she starts running forward. You can also sprint faster than this. Now if you stop suddenly and stand at any place, even for 1 second, and then you start running again, then again, the protagonist first starts walking, then he or she starts running in the direction you want. This becomes an issue while fighting the enemies when you have to quickly move from one spot to another. And due to this, if you crouch and move forward through any vent like this, then your movement instantly slows down automatically for no reason. This might create frustration for the player. But if you don't stop running and press the crouch button at the same time, then you will not face this slowness issue. Yeah, this problem still exists in the current version of Gotham Knights. I hope that the studio fixes this soon if not now. Initially, the heroic traversal abilities of all the four playable characters will be locked from the very beginning of the game. You need to either use your back claw or ride on your Batmobile only to move across the city. To unlock your special traversal skills, you need to grind through the Nightwood challenges associated with each character. These made me feel a little grindy for doing the Nightwood challenges continuously one by one, just for the sake of unlocking the special traversal skills, so I would suggest you to take your time. Don't hurry on completing the Nightwood missions, do some story missions, and do the Nightwood challenges after playing and completing one or two main story missions. Now, I think these traversal abilities should have not been an unlockable kind of feature in the first place. Ah, probably that's why our bad heroes came very late to save Batman. Physical and mental preparation go hand in hand. Now, even after unlocking the traversal abilities of all the characters, it does not feel so like if I am going or gliding faster than before. Let's take the example of Batgirl's glider, it feels much slower if we compare this to Batman's gliding from the Arkham series. There are some fast-paced speedy effects around the screen, but it doesn't make or feel the traversal faster compared to using the back claw. It would be good if we were able to turn those effects off. Heck, I can attach my back claw to the roofs of the buildings and go much faster than this. And this persists with all the four main characters' traversal abilities but at least using Red Hood's mystical jump feels really good honestly. Also, Robin's traversal ability felt kinda weird to me. He is using some kind of gadget connected to a satellite, using which he can quickly travel or teleport to shorter distances, but unfortunately, he cannot cover longer distances. I mean, come on man, you should be teleporting yourself directly to enemy hideouts and surprise them every day with your new costumes. On the other side, I think we need to see that Batgirl, Nightwing, Robin and Red Hood are not as experienced as Batman. They are still learning things and gaining experience in their journey without Batman. You need to upgrade the abilities and skills of every character separately to keep progressing in the game. They have no one to show them the right direction, except Alfred of course. So I think implementing things like these and in such manners might be intentional from the developer's side. We never know. You can even feel the slowness while riding the Batmobile. The fast-paced effects are there too. It doesn't feel as if I'm driving a bike or a vehicle. The speedy effects looks like as if it's making things feel faster than usual, but it fails to do its job. And yes, we have fast travel feature like in Batman Arkham Origins and Batman Arkham Knight, which can be unlocked manually by scanning the GCPD drones properly. Unlike the Batman Arkham games, Gotham Knights does not take place in one single night, rather it depends on how many nights you take to complete the whole game. You can see the broad day sunlight when you are inside Belfry. 
you can use your back computer to access the city's map and the upgrade ability options anytime and anywhere. However, after doing any major suit upgrade, or if you want to start a new mission, then you have to return to Belfry to do so. You can fast travel to Belfry after finishing the prologue part of the game. You can explore a few interesting things in Belfry, like the arcade game machine. Yes, you can play a different game within Gotham Knights by accessing this arcade machine, which is an interesting thing to check out. The combats, however, feels good and very decent. It is not as bad as I expected, rather, it feels like the combat system in this game is a mixture of the combat systems of both Insomniac's Spider-Man games and Batman Arkham games. Yes, the combat system also feels incomplete and a little bit clunky to me. The ranged attacks mostly fails to target the enemy at first strike. You can also aim your bat weapon to shoot a specific enemy or any surrounding object. The combats are not as smooth as those of the Insomniac Spider-Man games or the Batman Arkham games, but finding the enemies feels different to a certain extent in Gotham Knights. Each character has his or her own set of special attacks, which you can perform to beat a group of enemies, a giant enemy, or the boss. Also friends, if you get defeated then you will lose few of your collected resources, but you can use your health kit if you want to during any hard fight. However, the special thing here is that you can also fight against the NPCs if you want to do so. Hey, just check this out! Man, ah, uh, where did they go actually? You can also investigate several crime scenes in Gotham Knights, however, they are totally different from the crime investigation scenes from the Batman Arkham games. You have to scan and choose each item and connect it with another item to solve and get some clues to solve mysteries. Yes, this technique feels old, and you will understand why so, after you start playing the campaign. While hovering across the buildings, I noticed that the developers implemented some 3D interiors and infrastructures inside the buildings. If you try to see inside a window, or the glass doors of the petrol pump, you can faintly see what's inside the store or the building. Yes. You cannot go inside the buildings or the stores. You cannot even revisit those buildings or go inside them that were associated with any previous missions. But anyways, the interiors of the buildings looks good really, but most of them are the same copy-pasted materials which we can see in almost every buildings in the city. Now I don't know about the PS5 or the Xbox Series versions, but if you have bought the game on Steam, even then the game will install some Epic Games Store prerequisites and Epic Games Store related things after you boot the game for the first time or after any game update. This is done, maybe, to implement the crossplay support. But I think that they should have gone with some other alternate methods for the online co-op purpose. And yes, the game does not support local offline co-op mode, although you can play the game solo totally without the internet connectivity. I don't want to play online co-op, but the game still runs Epic Games service in the background even after launching the game from Steam. Hence you cannot skip this process, which sometimes creates an issue of stability in the game. So even if you want to play solo, the game will still install some Epic prerequisite files no matter what, although you don't need to connect your Steam account and Epic Games account together to play solo. Now don't worry friends, I am not going to give any story related spoilers. So feel free to watch this segment. Now I really love that WB Montreal implemented the idea of making a Batman game without the Batman himself. Despite of several endgame issues, I think that the game has a unique storyline, which we don't get to see much in video games, where the main superhero dies in his own game in the very beginning, and also without evolving the multiverse of course. Hence, Gotham Knights is not a Batman game at all. It is the game of the Bat family. I am loving the direction where the story is going. But the story pattern is not that perfect, although I can guarantee you that you will love the game and the story plot if you keep some patience and play the game. You will be surprised when you will come across some other familiar characters. 
and a good thing is that the game even tells you when you cannot skip a cutscene. This is some level of honesty that I have seen in any video game after a long time. However, the game's intro scene is very long, it goes around 10 minutes. Yes, it is skippable, but please don't skip the very first intro scene, as it is the core part of the game's story. I really didn't get bored while watching the intro scene, as it is, probably, the only scene where we could see Batman in his bat suit, and also alive at the same time. So, yeah, nothing more to say about the story of the game. Yeah, the game has a unique menu screen. If you change the suit of any, or all the characters, then you can see those changes being reflected in the menu screen too. You can see that all the hero suits have changed as I switch to the other alternate ones. I know that this is also available in other games, like in Marvel's Avengers. Well, Gotham Knights is a far better game than Marvel's Avengers of course, because there's no live service element in this game, even though the game's UI feels like a live service game, but it is actually not. Yes, Gotham Knights still has various technical issues. Like the buildings and the textures sometimes starts popping up randomly without any reason. The game has no exclusive full screen support, although I'm glad that the devs gave us the option to change the resolution on the borderless full screen mode. Yes, other than that, the game lacks polish and looks quite unfinished in my opinion. Yes, this game does not look like a true new generation game, and also absolutely, not worth of $60 at all. This game, you can say, is standing in a position between a good game and a bad game. It even does not look like a modern AAA game at all, sure, unless you see the price tag, yeah, but we also should not forget the time when the game was released. That 2020's global economic crisis impacted everything and everyone a lot. And it also impacted several game developments, including Gotham Knights. Thus, we don't know the other side of the story, so we should not blame the developers or the studio for that. Yeah, but sure, that doesn't mean that they would not provide further improvements post-launch of the game. I think that both the game studios WB Montreal and QLOC should have provided a quality of life update after the release, improving the whole game and taking it to a new level, but they didn't do that. Ultimately, Gotham Knights is a decent superhero game, which I think that you should definitely play if you already played and enjoyed the Batman Arkham games, or if you love to play superhero-based video games. If you love the characters, then I assure you that you will like the game too, even if it is for the story only. I hope that we will get better quality Batman or DC games in the near future. So in the end, I would like to give Gotham Knights a 6.5 out of 10. Yeah, I wish that the game was in a better state of quality than it is currently now. However, it is not that bad, especially when you will buy the game on sale. But you know, you will feel that something is missing from the game. Now, I don't recommend you to buy this game at a full price at all, never. Now before playing this game, I would highly suggest you to play all the mainstream Batman Arkham games first, that is Batman Arkham Origins, Batman Arkham Asylum, Batman Arkham City and Batman Arkham Knight. Otherwise, you will miss out on the real essence of Batman games. Only after finishing and playing the Batman Arkham games, you can enjoy playing Gotham Knights properly. So don't play the game before playing the Batman Arkham series, because honestly, you will not like Gotham Knights at all if you play or experience it in the first hand. Now the game last time went down to $15 for the standard edition, and in my region, it was available around $10 during that time. I bought the deluxe edition, which was around $12 in my region. So, was it worth it? For me, yes. I am enjoying this game a lot, so that $12 price point was totally worth for Maine. But, if I had to pay around $20 for that, then no, it would be not worth that money. But for $12, yes, it is a good deal. Now friends don't go with the deluxe edition if you're not interested in the cosmetic items. The standard edition provides better value than the deluxe edition. Yes, indeed, I am not getting the Arkham-like experience, but to be honest, I never expected that level of stuff from the game. It is totally different and separated from the Arkham series and its universe. Now those who pre-ordered and bought the game at launch, well yes, the game is not worth a $50-$60 dollars at all, and they got their money kinda wasted. But don't start thinking about that past thing now. I hope that the game's price will drop further down below. I wish it happened soon. Now I wanted to play more of the Batman stuff after finishing the Batman Arkham games multiple times, 
so I bought Gotham Knights recently and I saw it on sale, and also it was available for around $12 for the deluxe edition, and $10 for the standard edition, in my region. It is a good price for the game, if you are very much interested and serious about playing this game. Now $15 is a little bit much considering that you're paying for the standard edition. Now let me be clear, if you really want to play Gotham Knights and you know what to expect and what you will get from the game, then yes, $15 is a decent price, but I would say to wait for some time for the price to go below that. And if you are getting it around $10, then sure, go with that price. And if the game goes below $10 then absolutely yes, but before that, make sure to check out some non-spoiler gameplays, so that you already know how the game actually is. The game also has a story expansion DLC, which is included within the base game itself. So I think the game is worth between $10 to $15 if you are really interested in playing it on PC or any other platform. And yeah friends, so, this was my take on Gotham Knights. Let me know friends about your thoughts on the game. And also let me know whether you have already played the game or not, and how was your experience. And I really hope that the game gets a sequel, which should be much much better and not a disaster, unlike this one. And it must be a single player game, and not any type of live service video game, unlike the upcoming Justice League game from Rocksteady Studios. And with that being said friends, thank you so much for watching our video. Wishing you all a great time ahead. And, I will see you in this video, or in the next one.